Let's go, guys. All right, so this is the intro for the uh, next YouTube MacBook challenge, uh, the Chopper Challenge. This is basically my viewer submission, um, kind of like the, uh, the Fantasy Sword. Just me kind of wanting to make something neat, something cool, see if people like it. Um, definitely, definitely been watching these videos since they started coming out and, and seeing, you know, not only everyone else as far as the viewers, but even like the big boys making their stuff. Um, I, uh, I wanted to make this intro just to say that, you know, in the past I've, I've come up from, you know, making wooden swords years ago to uh, making cosplay swords out of aluminum, um, Captain America shields out of aluminum. That's one of the big things I was known for. Uh, and I did start transitioning into, you know, making my cleavers out of steel, just so I could practice, you know, how steel grinds, um, you know, how to machine it, things like that. Even, even texturing the spine of, uh, of the cleavers and doing the file work around the handles. Um, it has just been a really nice learning process throughout the whole thing. And, you know, it, it was made pretty known from some viewers that, uh, that I made my fantasy sword out of just regular steel, wooden hole and edge. I still wouldn't want to be cut or stabbed with it. Um, but I figured the chopper challenge would be a good time to, uh, to try something new. Um, if you haven't seen, I posted a video up uh, about a forge that I modified. Um, cause I want to try and get to a certain temperature to use that forge. Now I have the machinery to, you know, machine steel, to cut steel, to shape steel, but I don't have the means to, you know, forge, you know, the huge presses or anything like that. Um, the forge itself is essentially to heat treat. Um, back when the, uh, chopper challenge was announced, well, it was, it was prior to its announcement, they had talked about something was going to be a chopper challenge, and they knew it was like, oh, I want to do one of my cleavers, but I want to modify it, and I want to like do something really cool. Um, but I ended up getting a piece three foot by four inch, quarter inch thick, uh, 1095. I've never heat treated anything before. Um, I don't know if that forge will get to the heat temperature that I need to heat treat, uh, but I did just want to give you guys a heads up that um, I'm gonna try something new that I've never done before. You know, kind of stepping out of the box and learn something new, you know, from aluminum to steel to tool steel. Um, you know, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to get the machinery to, uh, to be able to make Damascus. That would be really cool. Um, but as of now, this is the baby step that I'm taking. Um, in my eyes at this moment, it seems like a big step. Um, but anyway, I ended up getting this piece of steel from uh, Maritime Knife Supply. Um, they are not a sponsor of my video, unless, no, they're, uh, they're a sponsor of the uh, YouTube Knife Maker Challenge. Um, they're up in Canada, and, um, and I knew ordering a tool steel that it's probably going to be harder to, to grind, um, and that I should probably get some belts. And I typically keep my Norton Blaze in stock. Um, usually 60 grit is what I have, um, but here in the States, they're either one sold out everywhere or two if you do find them at 60 grit they're really really pricey so while I was shopping over there on Maritime's website um, I saw they had Norton Blazes now these are 50 grit I use 60 grit I don't think it's that big of a difference you know all the grinds that I do I don't go any any less of a grit to get a finer look um, basically everything is a finished 60 grit so I don't think there's gonna be a problem there even it being a little bit more abrasive might help me out in the long run. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, they, they set uh, both of these. Um, I got an edge, an edge file guy from uh, Nordic Edge, you know, through Maritime. Great packaging. And also the um, little angle grinder, grinder uh, that goes with it. So, uh, I don't know if I'll be using that for this build. I think this is going to be a little bit too large to use these. Um, I don't really make small stuff other than my tactical butter knives where I just take a butter knife and, um, you know, grind it and shape it and stuff like that. So if anything, if I don't use it for this build, I'll definitely use it for, uh, for these in the future. Um, but, uh, Maritime, really great company. They hooked up, like, a tumbler. Uh, we got, like... A sticker that's really cool and a magnet um, and all this stuff came like I said from Canada I'm in Arizona really really quickly 
and uh, it was packaged really well. Like all this stuff is as you see, like no dents, no holes. Everything came really great. So uh, looks like Lawrence Lake is the owner. Um, good company, man. I I appreciate like the customer service. I didn't talk to anyone, but I mean, obviously, getting everything packaged up and shipped to me here in Arizona and the quality that it came, good stuff. Um, you know, I also got to, from the other sponsor, not of this video, of the uh, Night Baker Challenge, Mosa US. They hooked up like all kinds of pins. Uh, and if you did watch the fantasy sword that I made, that was my first time ever using one of these pins. And uh, it was actually pretty fun. I was pretty intimidated because I've never done it before, but uh, it came out really cool. So I might use these on this build. I'm not sure. I know in my mind I want to modify one of my cleavers and texture it. Texture it to maybe either look like wood, look like something organic. I'm not exactly sure, but those might come into play. Uh, either way, like I said, most of the U.S. and um, Maritime Max Supply, not sponsors of this video, but they are of the Knife Maker Challenge. Um, really good quality stuff. Um, as of right now, I'm just going to say I'll cut it short. Hopefully, like I said, double fingers crossed, hopefully uh, I can heat treat this to what it needs to be and I make something kind of neat that y'all like. Um, so without further ado, I'll just go ahead and cut it here and um, enjoy the video. All right, chopper challenge instructions. Uh, the big thing that stood out to me right there is the uh, chopper challenge text needing to be somewhere in the picture of the uh, submission photo. So uh, first off, I just went right through and was like, I think I'll do something cool for a little bit later. Um, so here we go, uh, taking the cleavers. Um, I make quite a few different sizes of cleavers. <clears throat> and like I said in the intro, I wanted to take them and do a redesign. I originally did these cleavers like eight years ago, you know, originally designed them, um, and have been making them since with minimal changes, but this one I really want to do something pretty, like pretty drastic. And, um, you know, not only just like altering the handle, but like altering the overall look, which is what I'll end up doing here. Um, I bring it into Photoshop. Uh, I have a drawing tablet, you know, a graphic designer back in the day, like back in high school days, college days. But um, it's always good for me to do like kind of a mock-up to see what direction I want to take. And I did do a mock-up with wood and I, it was looking cool, but I just wasn't really feeling it. So like I said, I wanted to do something a little like organic and I figured kind of biomech. I had made these bracelets out of copper um, over the past few years. And, you know, with those, it was air chasing, basically hammering the copper to get the to get the texture. Um, but that's kind of the look I wanted to go for. I just knew it was going to take a lot of sculpting. So that's essentially what I was trying to figure out on the inside part of the handles there. On the outside, I'm thinking like at the time, something kind of Geiger ish and then some textures down the spine of the blade. Um, like I said, a lot of sculpting. I already had that in mind, but um, but yeah, totally not, not a direction I was thinking, you know, back when I shot the intro. Um, you know, I thought wood was going to be really fun, but you know what, going more organic is what I was really feeling. So I just kind of ran with it. So from Photoshop back into CAD, um, you know, I originally made the changes in CAD to alter the cleaver, you know, the overall scale, the handle angle and all that. But now I'm just making the changes to match what I photoshopped up. And from this point, I can take all the pieces and take the blade and the handles and separate them out and, uh, <clears throat> and I go ahead and throw them on the piece of material just to make sure everything fits um, I've got a piece of bronze that I'm going to do the handles out of and uh, let's see right here I'm going to do pieces of paper for printouts because essentially what I need to do is figure out how to get these to the metal to cut them out um, so there we go use a little light table Mocked it all up, stitched it together, and then, um, you know, cut them out. And onto the Glowforge. Like I said, I had a little something in mind figuring, you know, the chopper challenge needed to be in the picture for the final submission. I was like, all right, you know, I'll do something physical, not just, you know, Photoshop a logo of the chopper challenge in the final picture. Just something I can toss around. <laughs> but, uh,. Here we go, transferring it from uh, paper to metal using tons of magnets. Center punching all the holes and 
to some of you, you might not know, but that bronze is not magnetic, so I actually glue it down. <laughs> Jokes, people. All right, center punch. Sharpie it out. All right, so here we go into the drilling of tool steel. You know, I've worked with tool steel before in the past, but never on a blade. Um, it was definitely, you know, a learning process, that's for sure. Um, I didn't blow out any drill bits, surprisingly, but I kind of went into it knowing, you know what, you got to go a little slow and don't burn out the bit. And uh, definitely don't heat up the material. Because as you can see, those little cutouts in the handle for the accents take a lot of holes. And just drilling the, that one inch hole right here took a lot of holes and I wanted to keep as much heat, you know, from the bit and from the material. So just going really low, going slow, hopping around, not spending too much time in one area. You know, I'm sure there's tons of right ways of doing this. <laughs> this is just the, uh, this is just the way it went. You know, I keep stepping up in drill bit size to get those holes open up more and more. And then take a little metal cutting wheel, pop that out, and onto the burrs. These guys eat material like crazy. Um, I've used these kind of burrs. I got them on Amazon. They're pretty affordable. Um, it's a whole set, but they just chew through material. And like I said, tons of holes in those accent pieces. So at this point, back to the burrs, just kind of sculpting them all out. Try to make them look kind of neat. And angle grinding. <clears throat> I'll say that um, angle grinding the steel was not as hard as the as the bronze. Yeah, I've worked with bronze before a lot, but my gosh, anytime it's it's time to angle grind it, that stuff is gummy. It just heats up and doesn't really cut very well. All right, just getting rid of the burrs and on to drilling. So that first little bit was uh, testing out my hardware, making sure the the holes the right size, which. You know, it's the same hard hardware I've used on, on all my builds, but just, just good to make sure. And here we are counter boring <coughs> for the same hardware, just so that the screw sits, uh, you know, below the surface of the material. But yeah, it's something, you know, measure once, or cut once, measure many, many times. And now I'll, uh, I'll hop into those belts that I was talking about um, from Maritime. I used a total of three belts on this build. Um, they're great belts. Like I said, I used 50 grit of the same, you know, Norton Broke Blaze. Um, but the uh, these 50 grits, man, do they chew through material. <clears throat> and the only reason I used three different blades is just because, or three different belts is because I, I didn't want to, you know, you'll see in a bit, do the grinds on the blade with the same one that I did profiling with. But yeah, profiling the, uh, the handles and the, the blade itself all with the same belt. And it's still got life to it. Like these belts are really, really good. And I will say, compared to regular steel, uh, tool steel, man, 1095 throws sparks like crazy. Um, you know, on the TW90, I've got the misting system on there just to keep everything cool. Um, you know, a lot of people do the the dip in a bucket of water. That's that's cool and all, but you gotta like stop and then go and stop and then go. The misting system, I don't. It's just the way I like to do it. it just keeps constant water on it. And if it gets too hot, you can put ice in the bucket you know, from where it's it's siphoning water from. That way it stays even colder. But uh, small wheel attachment right now, just getting all the curves. Getting as far in there as I can. All right, got the hardware inserts in. And this is the point where I think when I printed out the blade, um, there was something a little off because those two holes match and this hole was just slightly off from the handles. Which, you know, was concerning, but I was, you know, easy fix with the burr 
tighten everything up just make sure it fits and it's good to go so now I'm just gonna profile up uh, the handles with the blade just so everything's flush uh, three inch contact wheel uh, this this would be yeah I think this is the same belt <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did all the profiling with the same one but uh, you know like I said in the intro I'm not I'm not a person that like switches between a lot of different grits of belts to get different finishes um, unless I'm doing you know the final angle grinds for the for the blade edge itself um, but the hollow grinds I leave you know rough grit all the profiling you leave rough grit all right so now I'm doing the uh, little inside parts with the blade you know where it sits inside the blade making sure those are all nice and everything's all flushed up and ready for heat treat uh, that big old guy right there, my buddy Matt with uh, Magnum Works, he hooked up that uh, quench tank. He had a buddy that, that had the material and welds and assembled it together and rushed it over my house. He, uh, Matt even came over to help me out with the forge. Um, you know, I did a video where I insulated it and then fired it up. And, uh, you know, I was having problems with it, firing it up, just getting it consistent. He came over and replumbed the, uh, the hardware on it and got it breathing, breathing fire. So this night um, was pretty stressful. First time ever heat treating. Wasn't sure what to expect, but you know, like I said, Matt, uh, he wasn't here for this part, but he had walked me through it. You know, he's done all different kinds of tool steels, blade steels, stainless steels, heat treated everything. He's like, you don't have to go buy the book. It's not technical, like get it to a certain, you know, you'll see when it glows, when it's done. And when you quench, quench and need be have some aluminum ready which you know luckily I have all these scrap pieces of aluminum and uh, sandwich it in there and use that whole air tank to uh, to try and cool it down because I didn't want any bends and as soon as it came out of the quench I had a slight bend near the uh, the handle area okay so I think I'm going to Put it in the uh, in the cycle 400 degrees, half hour. Let it cool 400 degrees, half hour. Um, as far as wow, <laughs> um, this is definitely hard or definitely soft. Definitely hard. So I think we got it. I think we got a nice hardness on the blade. So good on that. Next step. And actually, I did a hour on, a uh, half hour off, two cycles. So this is the Cerakote oven that I've made uh, out of two smokers. This is what we cook the the Cerakote, you know, parts in. So that's round two. Shutting it off, plugging everything, and on to uh, white vinegar. This this is something I've done with all the blades. I've even done it in a lot of the videos. Soak it in vinegar. You know, in Arizona, leave it outside in the sun, come back a day later, and uh, the scale basically just wipes right off. But like I was saying, out of the heat treat, right out of the quench tank, there was a slight bend uh, around the back of the handle, and I'm assuming just because that's where uh, that's where I didn't heat treat, because I didn't want to heat treat the full the full blade and handle. I just figured the blade is all I need to get, you know, hardened. But, you know, overall, the heat treat went really great. And, you know, it, it's intimidating going into something not doing it before. Um, but once you do it a couple times, you know, you get more and more comfortable with it. But even after doing it, you know, one time, it was like, oh, okay, it's not too bad. So, but here we are. Uh, I think that's the half inch or three quarter inch small wheel on there. Um, just doing all the, the bevels on the handles. Again, that water missing system is the way to go. All right, so here comes the, uh, the I guess, Geiger-ish. 
kind of texture I was I was trying to Photoshop <laughs> that I photoshopped pretty badly um, but just kind of fleshing it out you know in person and then I swap that pattern up um, I have a little tiny round burr <clears throat> and just kind of given different textures nothing really you know in mind just kind of playing with it having fun thinking this might look cool and then trying it out and just committing to it and there we go oh yeah the uh the fordham that i got a couple years ago finally uh finally took its toll on uh, doing all that texturing on the handles luckily i've got two backup you know little dremels um, this was hours and hours <laughs> to do those pockets, so uh, I didn't record, you know, the whole process of that. But I was digging how they were coming out, so I wanted the second one, and then cut, and they're both done. <laughs> yeah, I've got little tiny like divots um, where the burrs kind of like jumped and touch the surface of the material and I'm just trying to sand them down to make them less prominent I got the majority of them away but there are still little little pieces you can see but I'm good with it and even after this I think uh, I think I hit it one more time on the on the belt sander just to flush them up make them a little less minimal alright so time to grind the blade this, uh, this is a jig fixture, I don't even know what you want to call it, that I made years ago, back when I first started doing cleavers. Um, it's basically some more of that scrap aluminum that I have, um, you know, from all the Captain America shields and all the swords that I made over the years. Um, <clears throat> there's always drops of material from the sheet that I cut the parts out of, and I always kept them, just thinking, well, I could use them for something. Um, so this I kind of used, you can see, going back and forth um, there's door hinges <laughs> that I drilled out um, and there's the first side uh, and basically mounted the two pieces of aluminum to a track um, with ball bearings that basically I can just mount to the tool rest and glide it left and right you know I got the stool back there I'll sit down I'll move to one side you know pull and push um, but I like uh, I like seeing the hollow grinds as I go. You know, it's not something that I want to do on the tool rest, you know, pushing away from me. Um, I kind of like to control that that hollow grind. So here we are under the edge. <coughs> Trying to get that bevel in. Again, these 50 grits are great. Um, but like I said, on the... Uh, the very edge I'll swap up between belts you know work them smaller and smaller especially with this tool steel I want to have it have it nice and sharp by the time I'm done so I want to do another finer grit I want to say I went through three different uh, grit belts you know going from finer to even finer to very fine I can't remember, I believe they're J-Flex uh, belts. But I want to say it went up to 220 and then 400 was the final. Alright, so now it's time to sculpt on the, on the spine and the blade. This was, uh, again, one of those times that took a lot of, um, of video editing, so I just uh, clipped it and then finished. <laughs> Slip it to the other side, do that first one, and then just cut the video. You know, it's, it's fun, I love sculpting, um, but the video editing and having all the memory to try and save hours and hours of footage, time consuming. So right here, I'm just taking those, you know, where I where I ground it out and kind of blending it out more, rounding off the edges. 
making it look, you know, a little more organic. And now onto the little pummel. I guess that's what you would call it. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure what I was going for. I was, I was thinking a little bit of a bone feel, like kind of bone, kind of wood. Um, you know, I do end up going down the, the handle right there and kind of had, you know, bone segments in mind. You know, just kind of playing around. And like I said, just running with something and committing to it. And hoping it looks good. <laughs> Alright, so this was definitely something that took hours and hours and hours of time. And uh, unfortunately, you'll see in the final picks, um, it kind of didn't work out for me. I, I want, wanted it to look kind of like dragon skin-ish, uh, but by the time I had uh, had blued it, had blued the seal, it just kind of disappeared. I mean, it, you could still kind of see it, but it's more faint than I wanted it to. But here I am with the uh, Aluminum Black by Birchwood Casey. Uh, the steel would be the Birchwood Casey uh, Super Blue. Uh, the aluminum black I have tons and tons of. I know that there is a uh, a bronze blackener and a brass bl blackener, but the aluminum, like I said, I have tons of it, and it works on brass, bronze, and copper. So I have no no need to buy the other types. Now this is where everything kind of goes awry, uh, because every time I've used uh, a bluing solution on on my cleavers or swords, it's turned black. Um, and near the pommel area, it stayed black as normal, but when I worked up to the blade, uh, it ended up turning it kind of bluish and stained it pretty badly. Um, but you'll see in the final picks. We'll cut this short here. This is pretty much the final step before uh, assembly, but I did make a sheath uh, for this, and I have a whole separate video. So. Um, I'll put a link to that here, you know, in the corner in the description. But for now, that's the video. I'll uh, let you go so you can check out the final pics and uh, glamour shots. I hope you dig it. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. Uh, I will be getting to the, the final pictures and videos here in a minute. Um, I got done doing the voiceover and then uh, editing the video, and I kind of felt like, uh, you know, as far as the intro, I, I, I went into this. You know, unsure of a lot of stuff, doing a lot of first, you know, first time working with tool seal as far as making a blade, uh, first time heat treating. You know, I made that forge. Well, bought the forge and then insulated the heck out of it. You know, that whole video that I did, um, so I could reach the temperature to do 1095 heat treating. And you know, I would say that for what I did, it was successful. I think as far as making a chopper, it's successful. Um, is it by the book exactly to the temperatures? times, you know, all that, probably not, but for a first timer, I think, I think it came out reasonably well. Um, that might be like, I might be undercutting that, but I feel like I did <laughs> a really good job. Um, as far as going into it, being really, really scared, um, and then going through it for the first time, um, I feel a lot more confident. I feel like I could definitely do that in the future more often. Um, you know, as far as as far as the video goes, I, I know I wasn't sure on how many belts I used. It was three of the Norton uh, 50 grits from Maritime. Uh, that one was the one that I used for the profiling of the, the bronze and the blade itself. Uh, that one back there is the hollow grind one, and then this one is the one that I did the, the, the edge devil on. Um, and all three of those, like they, they still have teeth on them. So those belts, like I said, I've, I've used those uh, 60 grit on all the, the steel cleavers that I've done in the past. And those live for a really long time. And I was just thinking maybe it's because it was just regular hot rolled steel. But, you know, going through the tool steel, they still got life. So I definitely support those belts. Uh, I know in the voiceover I wasn't sure as far as the, the edge bevel uh, belts. After those 50 grit, I went to a Norton, it looks like blue fire. And then after that was the J-Flex uh, 220 and then 400. Uh, I've never done stone, the whetstone, you know, uh, sharpening. I didn't think I needed to do that for a chopper, especially something of this size and weight. Um, 
I would like to get into that someday, but I did have a bunch of leather straps um, from the Captain America shields that I've been making for like seven, eight, nine years now. So I took one of those and I put some polishing, polishing compound on there and I struck the heck out of it. Now, did that do anything? I don't know. Uh, all I've heard is you need to be at like 5,000 grit for it to even work. Uh, but it did put like a really nice like micro polish all the way down the edge of the blade. And uh, <laughs> I'm happy with it. You know, like I said, first time doing everything. Um, I've been having fun. Now, I know that there's like a science to doing this paper test, and I'm not good at it. I, I've tried a couple times, and it might be the blade, it might be me, I'm not sure. Um, so, you know what, let me pan out. Let me zoom, focus, all right. So, yeah, I'm kind of catching. So, I'm not sure if it's the flick of the wrist, or maybe it's just the blade isn't sharp enough. But, you know, like I said, it's a chopper. It's not really meant to slice. But I do know, kids love their Lunchables. Um, not sponsored. But I was testing it out on some, you know, thicker cardstock, almost like a cereal box. And it cuts relatively well, you know, as far as something a little bit more sturdy. So, do I think it's sharp? I'm pretty sure it's sharp. You know, I know people in the comments of the fantasy sword were saying, oh, that's a mall sword because it's not real tool steel. You know, I wouldn't want to be stabbed or, or, you know, sliced with that. So, I would say that this is definitely good. Um, so, let's see, let's get to the sheet. Um, I like accessories. I'm that kind of person. So, you know, as usual, I had to make a sheath, which I did. And this one was kind of inspired. Will Stelter had uh, posted a video of, of a blade that he made. And there was a woman on there that she did uh, an inlay of beaver tail. And me and Steph were watching that video and we were like, that looks really, really cool. Let's do something like that. So we went to Tammy Leather. I got all the hardware um, for this. And while we were there, they had this uh, embossed alligator skin. Big old huge sheet of it. And it wasn't that bad price. I think it was like $69 or $70. And um, yeah, I ended up snagging that and sat there and like whittled out the, the leather, you know, little windows behind the front piece so that it would sit in there flush. Um, so that, that was time consuming, yet fun. Um, but yeah, like I said, I like accessories. Let's see if we can even see this. But I did make it just like, uh, just like all the other cleavers and swords that I've made. You know, you can attach it to your belt. And walk around with it, you know, if you want to. Um, so yeah, all in all, I think it was a success. I would say it came out the way that I wanted it to. And, uh, and it heat treated really, really well. So, I hope you guys dig it. hope you guys dig the video. It was really fun making it. And um, I'll cut it now, because I'm going to go uh, chop some fruit. There's a big pile of fruit right over there that if I have enough time, today is like the submission day, April 20th, for the Chopper Challenge. Like I said, I was up last night editing the, uh, the video after I did the voiceover. So I'm going to go and chop some fruit real quick and maybe attach that after the uh, final picks in video. So anyway, I hope you guys dug it. I think it came out kind of cool. Um, but yeah. All right. Take care.